Well, we're getting a lot done on the railroad, finally. Well, it's a nice time of year to work on it. Yeah, and we wanted to work on it all summer. We've had a great summer, but, well, we just had other obligations. Oh, and lots of them. And so we, we didn't get too much done out here over the summer, but now we're really getting a lot done. Now, typically, I don't run the railroad that much. It's just fun to work on it. <laughs> but isn't it fun to get out here on a summer evening when it cools off and just run some trains around? Well, I love these passenger cars and the lights on in them. That way we can actually go for a train ride. Uh, it's kind of like pretend train ride. Now, we have a project that has, uh, that has materialized. Oh, boy. <laughs> If you've been following along, you know that two years ago we built a trellis out here and we've been trying to encourage the grapevine to climb up on top of the trellis. Well, it did. It did. <laughs> <laughs> and now we've got a, a little overgrown situation. We were trying to just train the grapevine to climb up here, not so much produce fruit or anything. We just wanted to get it all over the trellis. But it's been a nice, wet, perfect year for grapes and we find ourselves with a lot of grapes. Right, we've not tried to whine about it or anything, <laughs> but we could. <laughs> anyway, I had an idea. What if we bring the train out here and use the train to harvest the grapes? Well, that could work. <laughs> <laughs> we could cut down the grapes and load them into the gondola car and then take them in that way. Um, it's worth a try. I guess we can try it. We, we have a lot of grapes though, and the problem is they've gotten so big and so heavy that they're now falling all over the railroad, and it's reached a point where they just simply have to be harvested. We talked to a lot of friends. We said, hey, anyone want grapes? And the answer was kind of uniformly, well, no. Uh, just We couldn't <laughs> find anybody with an interest. And then we found out that there's actually a community group that'll come around and pick your fruit or uh, vegetables if you've got too much of that. And then they take it and, and give it to people who need that. But uh, we would have had to have gotten on that months ago. Oh, yeah. We can't just call them now and say, hey, come harvest our grapes. But I think next year that's what we're going to do. More than likely. Now, currently, the gondola car is parked over here at the Nevermind. Oh. Uh, well, I've been working on the Nevermind, and that's going to be an upcoming show. And so, well, I've just had the gondola over here because I need it to test the mechanism uh, on the Nevermind to make sure that it's working correctly. Right. Is that lever right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we will be lever right there. But, yeah. Uh, it is fun to, to run this mechanism. I doubt very much that I will run it more than maybe once a year. But I do want it to work just because, well, it can. And so I thought, hey, let's use the train and do some actual switching here and come over here and pick up the gondola car and take it over to the grapevine and harvest some grapes and put them in the gondola car. That sounds like a plan. <laughs> We don't usually do switching on the railroad. Again, we don't even run it all that often, except just to come out here and enjoy an evening with the train running. But I thought, hey, this is an opportunity to do some actual switching on the railroad. So we thought we'd pull out Mexicano Catorce, an excellent locomotive for doing this operation. And the very first switching move we have to achieve here is running around the caboose. 
because we want to tag the gondola onto the train, but you can't put a car on behind the caboose. It's a sin. That's right. <laughs> And now, with the gondola car in place, we have to go back and pick up our caboose. Ah. Because a train has to have a caboose it at does. the end. It absolutely does. I think there was actually a, a rule in the Book of Rules back in the day that said it wasn't a train until there was a caboose. Well, I still feel like that. <laughs> it they should, don't use them anymore. They, it's, they should still be like that. Yes. And here we have our first load, about one pound of grapes, which I have picked off the vine over here. Now we merely need to load that into the gondola car. Oh, that's going to be a feat. <laughs> I think it's going to actually be a hand. It might be, unless you're making <laughs> wine, then it's a feat. Then it's feet. <laughs> Thank you. 
here we have about one pound of grapes neatly loaded. We'll take this inside and eat it. Right. I'm just sort of thinking though, we've got a little over a hundred pounds of grapes out here on the vine. This might be kind of slow going. <laughs> this is what you call grape nuts. <laughs> We're being grape nuts thinking we can do this, but it's fun. But I think we're going to have to uh, come up with some faster way of getting these grapes off the vine. Right. The switching's fun, but we just, by, at this speed, it's going to take us somewhere around 10 years to get these grapes off the, the vines. If we leave them out here much longer, they're going to be sun-dried raisins. Or freeze-dried grapes. <laughs> Yeah, we've already had our first snowstorm. Well, if they freeze, then we can sell them for those uh, resin grapes and people can put them on their coffee table. We could give them out for Christmas gifts. <laughs> Anyway, I, I got them all cut down and I, I sort of trimmed back the vines because the vines have just run amok and they've gone absolutely everywhere. And people in the know have said, you know, you shouldn't do this this time of year. The, the vines should be cut back in January. Oh, not our January. No. Um, I, we'd freeze I, to the vine. I, I would need an Arctic survival suit to do that. So uh -huh. I just went ahead and did it uh, right now just to get that done and get the vines all trimmed up out of, out of the way. And that looks much better. Yes, I would dare say you have it conquered. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, you can see I made something of a mess. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, now we just have to clean up uh, two or three pounds worth of grapes that fell all over the railroad. I was thinking I could use the shop vac to clean this mess up. Yeah, that would really suck. <laughs> Can you imagine the mess? Talk about making wine the hard way. I was sort of thinking I could wash the whole tub of the thing out to start with, and then when it was all sticky and full of wine in there and just disgusting, wash it out again. But uh, I think you're right. I think it's going to have to just be hand labor. Right. I guess you like grapes. You know, I had to run inside about every five minutes and wash my hands because I just couldn't deal with how sticky and gooey they were getting. Oh, man. And we upset the neighbors. Oh, yeah. It seems like we always attract at least one protester. <laughs> I, th I think he likes to eat the grapes. I guess so. He was pretty mad that you were gathering them up. At first, well, I thought he was going to come down here and bite us. I mean, he made it about halfway down the, the pole, You're snarling mad. and showing his teeth. Are you mad? That's one unhappy squirrel. All because Jell is cleaning up the grapes. <laughs> I guess he likes grapes. I guess. What's the matter? You're not scared or anything. I hope you're not stuck. Are you stuck? Are you mad? I'm sorry. I well, know. I thought I'd gather up a few of the grapes and put them in a well, bowl and feed the poor the squirrel so he wouldn't uh, beat up on us or something. I'm afraid that within the next few days they'll be turning into grape nuts. Right. Well, if he's uh, likes walnuts, why not grape nuts? Yeah, squirrel likes nuts, so ah, grape nuts in this nuts. case. There you go. Anyway, a lot of handwork here because things are caught down between the ties. But I was also using the, the garden blower here, the leaf blower, and just uh, doing a lot of wholesale cleaning up this way. Right. That moves a lot of grapes. But when they're all caught down in there, then you have to just go in with your fingers. And it's a little time consuming. But good grief, look at all the grapes. Right. Finally, the garden sprayer here because there was a lot of sticky residue. Oh, I can imagine. And fortunately, we have a rather waterproof railroad. That's right. And so I can just take to it with the garden hose like this and it's just fine. So we're not all washed out.
right. Well, back to running trains. Well, that's the fun part. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, please subscribe. And in fact, think about joining. It costs a few dollars a month, but it sure helps us out. You can hit the join button. But it doesn't cost a thing to hit the upcoming subscribe button. Right here. Anyway, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you here on Tuesday. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.